We're back in the shop. We've unboxed our Tradition St. Louis Hawk and Rifle kit, and today we're going to be starting to put it together with the beginning parts of assembly. This is the perfect project as we head back into winter and semi-quarantine again. So if you haven't picked one of these up, be sure to get it on order. In the spring, it was really hard to get a hold of these, and you, we might have that same issue here going into winter, especially with the holiday season coming. We got this kit through Mike Eater at Flintlocks LLC. We'd like to thank Mike for getting this kit in for us. If you're an enemy LRA member and would like this kit at a bit of a discount, get in touch with Mike at Flintlocks LLC. Tell him you're an NMLRA member and which kit you'd like to get a hold of and he'll make it happen. So the first step in assembling this kit that we're going to go through is dry fitting. And what that means is we're going to just put all of the hardware that came with the gun in and make sure that it fits. If it doesn't fit, we're going to sand and carve things away. But this is a beginner kit, so the inletting should be 95% of the way there. So we're just going to go through, fit everything, make sure everything fits properly, and make those adjustments as needed. And the first part of that is the lock. I'll kind of push it in here. Now there's quite a bit of wood taken away on this lock, so we don't want to abuse this. Um, as you can see here, there's a lot of wood out of here, but it fits right in there. Don't be afraid to push on it, but don't push too hard. And it should just snap in like that. We shouldn't have to force anything there. Next, we're gonna place our ramrod retention spring in this channel that's been cut out here. We want the loop end, you can see there, towards the muzzle, which is this front end here. I'm just gonna drop it in there. Ethan from the future now. <laughs> it's been explained to me now that the front lock bolt goes through the loop that is formed in this ramrod spring. I looked back at the instructions and it does in fact say to do that. I just totally missed it in the process. So this spring is now captured in here and um, can't get lost or left out. So that's what's going to keep that ramrod in there. Next we want to make sure that our screw holes for the lock bolts line up and you can see there they do that one especially there on the front the back end does as well it might take a little finagling but everything looks pretty true there so we're going to move on to the next step grab our bag of hardware here we've got our two of these long bolts here these are your lock bolts so they've got threading just out here on the front end they're perfectly round here and so we're going to drop these into this washer here like that and that's going to go into our lock bolt there do the same for this guy having this hardware just laying out makes me a little nervous so i'm just going to transfer these screws and pieces into this plastic bin just so i don't lose them I'm just going to keep that bag in there just in case we need those. And I'm going to set these away from my bench so I can't spill anything. Okay, so next we need a flathead screwdriver. So my washer's here a little snug. My lock bolt washer is not fitting. So we're going to have to take a little bit away. Let's try this back one. See if it's any closer. Probably not. Okay. So we're going to set those aside so we don't lose them. You could probably do this with like a little Dremel. I'm a little nervous about taking off too much. So I'm just taking this little half round file, as tedious as it is. I'm just gonna go around, making sure to keep it even all the way around. <laughs> See if we can make that big enough for that washer. We're getting there. Now, you might have the notion to just smack that with a hammer and just set it. And that might work. I don't want to crack this at all though. So I'm just gonna kinda take it slow and steady. And keep removing this material. <laughs> Listening to gunsmiths, talk about using power tools is they say it's a, a quick way to make big mistakes. If you were <laughs> wanting to build a kit fast, you probably wouldn't be building a kit. I think putting it, to, putting it together is really all the fun. 
And we're just about there. With our first lock bolt washer fitted, we're gonna move on to the next one, just doing the same thing. Just taking this file, going all the way around, trying to keep the file even and vertical, straight up and down, so we keep a nice even channel for this washer. The second one didn't need nearly as much, so I'm hoping that we can just push it in there. So that looks like it's setting all the way. Let's just gonna tamp it in there now. There we go. So with both of those in now, we're gonna try to set our bolts again. And that one drops through. And we're just gonna snug that up. I'm not looking to super tighten that. Just want that to grab that lock plate on the other side. So those are fit pretty nice. I'm happy they're, they're level in there so our filing didn't mess anything up. We did have to tamp it in there with our rubber mallet a little bit. Um, so you probably don't need to take out nearly as much as I did on this side, but it's still a nice even fit there. You can see there aren't any gaps or anything. So really pleased with how those went in. Next we're gonna take our trigger plate and our tang screw. And we're gonna thread it in and out of this hole a couple times. This is going to help burnish those threads and make sure any little burrs or anything that got in there during the manufacturing process get cleaned out. I'm just going to back that out until it's flush and I'm just going to leave that together so I don't have to hunt those. Now what we want to do is pick up our trigger guard and trigger like this, lining up this step here on the trigger plate with the brass trigger guard and just kind of pinching that flush. And we wanna make sure that everything has enough room to move around, which it does. So if this trigger guard was bumping up against these triggers, we might have an issue. But manufacturing on this, pretty solid. Then we're gonna take our trigger assembly and head over to the gun vise and start fitting this. Back here at the gun vise, we're ready to set the trigger into our stock. There's a little bit of wood debris here, just some chips from the milling process that we're going to take out with our file. We don't want any of that in there when we set this trigger, so just a real gentle on the file here, just enough to pull those shavings off the wood. Some other stuff down in here. I'm just going to use the end of our file here and try to just get all that stuff out of there. On this flat face here, I'm using the flat end of my file and on the rounded faces down in there, I'm gonna use the rounded end of my file. Get on out of there. With that cleaned out now, we're just gonna drop our trigger assembly in there and see how it fits. That looks pretty good, really. If I pr try to press both ends, it rocks just a little bit. Um, our tang bolt's gonna go through here and that's gonna connect to our barrel. So really, the probably the pressure point's gonna be right there. If I push here so that, that the front end is flush and then push back here on the back, it's still pretty level, so I'm not too worried there. We got a little bit of a gap here from the milling, uh, but I think our trigger guard's gonna cover that up, so that should be fine. I'm gonna look through this front hole here just to make sure that it's lined up with the hole that it's supposed to in the stock, and it is, so not too worried there. I'm just gonna grab the trigger guard. Let's see. Now my trigger guard looks to be off just a little bit. Um, it'll need some file work though, so we're not gonna worry about that right now. I just wanted to see and make sure that... So this end up here, where there's a little gap between the trigger plate and the stock. That kind of corresponds here with this shallow loop on this trigger guard, so that's going to cover that right up nicely. When I'm grabbing this in my vise, you can see it there a little bit, I'm trying to grab the front, the two flat faces here on the wood. I'm not pressing very hard, but I'm making sure that a lot of that is hooked here into the wrist. So that's how I'm grabbing that in my vise there. Now we want to make sure that our wedge fits in here and goes through to the other side, which it does. It's tight, but that's good. We want that to be tight. I'm going to grab this in with a pair of pliers, pop it out. With all of our stock pieces dry fitted, 
on the lock end of things. We're gonna move on to the barrel now. And we're gonna do the same thing we did to our lock, or our tang bolt, screwing it into the trigger. We're just gonna go through here a couple times, making sure that it threads, and we can get rid of any burrs. So it goes through our tang nice, no issues there. That's gonna line up nice. We're gonna go over here to the gun vise and just kind of press that in a little bit. So it looks like I'm running up against my lock a little bit. So I'm gonna loosen these. Lock plate screws. Let's see if I can push that down in there any. I'm being real gentle on all of this. I'm pressing and moving around here on this inlet and I'm careful of where the front end of the stock here is just so I don't put any unwarranted pressure on anything. We've got some shavings in here from the milling just like we did on the trigger area, on the trigger inlet. So I'm gonna go through with our file and just get those removed and blow them out. Looking at these, this is definitely what was stopping that tang from setting. This isn't so much material removement. This is just wearing out the bottoms of those shavings where they attach. Here I'm just using a knife, see if I can go along and just sever those that are, I'm having trouble getting with that file. There we go, that gets our tang in there a little bit. I've got some, if you can see, got a little bit of, of a gap here at the back of that tang I don't like. And I'm gonna pop this lock out. Just carefully walking that out of there. So I'm fitting that. Grab my tang bolt, make sure that lines up. Which it does. Next we're attaching this barrel tenon and this is what is going to lock into this wedge inside the stock. Sometimes these will be angled a little bit to make it easier to attach on one side, but I don't think that's the case here. We wanna make sure this angled end is pointed towards the muzzle. So this piece doesn't wanna fit in right out the box. So we're gonna use this dovetail file. My father has set out for me. This has one cutting edge or one cutting side, and the other two sides are just flat. So they're not gonna cut anything. And this is gonna allow us to come in here and extend the width of this just a little bit so we can get that dovetail to fit in there. So there it fits in a little bit more. So we've got the barrel tenon attached now. It took a little bit of file work as you saw. So we've got this pretty centered, I think, looking at it, and we're ready to move on to the next step, which is threading our nipple into the bolster here. So in our parts bin, this is our nipple. You might be able to see, there you can see how small that hole is there. So this is the part where we're gonna put our cap Little fire is going to come through here and ignite the black powder at the bottom of our barrel. At this point, you can also screw the bolster screw into the designated spot using a straight slot screwdriver. Tighten until snug. Traditions recommends we put a little bit of oil on both of these thread sets just to keep them, uh, make, just to make them easier to get out in the future. So I'm going to use some, a little bit of oil there. 
Add a little extra there, so I'm just gonna put those on both of these screws so they're easier to take out in the future. So with our tenon on the barrel, the nipple in, and our tang set here in the stock, we're gonna set this barrel and make sure that it fits, lining up with, making sure that we have a flush connection here at the tang, but then also we're gonna come down here to where we set the wedge and make sure that all of that lines up too. And I haven't done any change here between the barrel and the tang, and it is real flush, I think. I've, I've gotta back it up just a little bit to fit in the inletting there some, but everything I think is looking pretty good. It would be helpful <laughs> if this, the manual had some more pictures, I will note. So now we're gonna turn this over and set the lock in our vise as well. So we're gonna set the hammer in half cock. So with our wedge in and our lock in and our barrel into the tang, we're gonna put in our tang bolt and then flip it over and line it up with the bolt on the trigger assembly. And I'm just gonna hold it there and see if we can screw this bolt in to that trigger. There we go, just like that. So now we've got our tang bolt through. So the barrel is held in, catching on the tang connected to the tang bolt, goes into our trigger plate here. And we have this wedge connected to our tenon. So all of this is together now, it's not gonna come apart. And with that, we wanna make sure that the hammer is going to fall squarely on the nipple. So we're gonna set it. And forget it, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna hold back on the hammer with my thumb so this doesn't just hit the nipple square on. And it'll ruin your nipple and make it harder to use over time. So I'm holding, I've got pressure here on the, on the hammer. I'm gonna pull the trigger back, releasing the hammer, and make sure that it lines up on that nipple. Which it does, I think, looking at it there, it looks pretty good. And it, I mean, it, it's a cheaper kit. It came with plastic sights, but really the amount of work I've had to do on fitting these parts is almost nothing. You can see there's a whole list of things to do here if this doesn't line up, which it does. So I'm very thankful not have to go through all of that. To continue dry fitting, it wants us to attach the sights. I'm not really concerned about doing that right now. I'm more concerned about getting the rest of the hardware set up and ready to go, because uh, it's gonna take a lot more work than screwing those sights on. Next, it looks like we're moving to brass to wood assembly with the trigger guard. They make note here that you can remove material from the brass or the wood, but they just be careful, which we have been so far pretty careful. So I think we're in, in good shape. I'm gonna start with the trigger guard. So we're gonna move over to the vise here and get this set up. At the vise now, I'm grabbing it in the back of the wrist as it goes into the, the butt stock here. It's a solid place to grab it and it lets me work on the places where the trigger guard's gonna attach real easily. We're gonna start with the rear of the trigger guard. And it's a little wide. You can kind of see there, the back half of it's gonna fit. The front half isn't there. I'm gonna start by taking off this burr here on this hole. I'm gonna take my pencil and kind of trace around. And then we're gonna get some expert help on how to move forward. Okay, the first thing I would do is I would get a nice radius on the front of that instead of it's kind of cobbed the way it is. Okay. And the same thing with the rear. See that? Oh, okay, yeah, it's got things? that mold mark. Okay. I clean, get a nice radius filed on there and get that mold flashing out of there. So you okay. got that cleaned up nice. And I do the same thing up here, making sure, get some flashing here. Okay. I'd get my trigger guard all cleaned up. Okay here. I mean, all that stuff, I'd get that all cleaned up as best I can. Then I would, it fits pretty close now. Uh, I, I would just do that and then see where you are Okay. before you do anything else. Okay. Thank you.
at that. I got to do a little bit yeah, more just there. Yeah, be careful taking too much off because it's just a nice tight fit okay. on those sides. I guess that'll be in the wood, right. in the inlet, That's so I don't need wood. to worry about that. Well, it's always better. We're going slow. You see guys do it faster, that's just because they've done it 6,000 times. Right. You learn, it slows the key. Okay, so now I've got the mold lines out, and I'm still a little long. Let's see what you got here. You take a look. Okay. So what I normally do is take an X-Acto knife and go in and line around that. Okay. Put that in there, kind of holding back so that you know you're all the way back. And then you just have to go around there and mark it. So I can kind of see it right there. So then you can just take that guy. You can just cut through. Yeah. Okay. A little at a time. A little at a time. From what I've seen, this is a an issue on these. Or not an issue, this is common. The chisel I'm using is a little Swiss made number five. See there. Those little short palm tools are kind of handy for that kind of work. Yeah. So I'm just making a few cuts each time and then looking at it and then going back and hitting the spots where it's connecting. And getting kind of close, it's dirty enough from the filing that it kind of leaves an imprint that I can go after with my chisel. Just rocking it back and forth, get it to leave something. It's a little bit right there. A little bit over here, we're just gonna scrape off. Okay, so now it kind of pinches in there and lines up. It's not perfect. Only a couple little little spots where I think I took off just a little too much. And that's how you learn. And that's how you learn, yeah. So I'm pretty happy with that fit up here at the front of the trigger guard though. It's a little long. There's only so much you can do there, because if you line it up up here, then you'd have to you'd have to inlet more back here. So the screws for our trigger guard are these little black guys here. I'm just going to set them with a, just a screwdriver. I'm going to poke a start hole for that back screw it's to help this screw bite a little bit better. Taking a little hand drill and drilling a pilot hole probably wouldn't hurt. But punching that little hole seems to have gotten us enough. So I got the back end of the trigger guard fitted. So it took a little carving there you saw. And then I noticed as I was trying to fit the front end, there was about an eighth of an inch gap at the front. Now I looked at it and I thought, well, you know, everything's not perfect. They talk about it in the manual that things aren't gonna match specifically. Uh, my father was in the shop. He has built many guns now, a lot more than I ever have, or probably ever will. To him, it was it was a little unacceptable. And, you know, it was a large gap. So what you're about to see is something that traditions on this little addendum tells you not to do. So this has the chance of breaking your trigger guard. It's not covered by the warranty. Do not do this unless you have an experienced gunsmith on hand walking you through it or you yourself are willing to run the risk of breaking that trigger guard. Now, I will say it seems to be a pretty common trigger guard shape. You can get another one from Traditions or any other muzzleloading gunsmith supplies shops out there, but just do know that this next bit that you're about to see is in here as something not to do. It can break your trigger guard and it is not covered by the warranty that Traditions gives you 
do this under your own risk. Please do it if you do do it under the supervision of an experienced gunsmith. Do not do this if you are like me and did not know how, any, how to do this. Gain some. Look at that from the side. See how that radius is a little short right there at the top? Yeah. That's what you're trying to take out. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking we're gonna try to take out. Just grab a piece of leather. Okay. Just put it underneath, just one layer underneath there. There you go, just like that right there. Okay, take it out. Put it back in. It's not too bad. That probably quit there, wouldn't you? I think so. Okay. Voyanty unvoided. A lot of times, this little tap of the bag around there, you can move that brass around. If you move it too much and move it a whole bunch, then you want to probably want to anneal it again. But we didn't move that enough to matter. Okay. Well, good deal. Okay, moving on up. Now we're moving on to the nose cap. With the barrel in, we'll put this in our vise and see if we need to remove anything. Gonna kind of slide it in from that front end. Boy, that's tight. So that, looking at that all the way around, fit on pretty flush. Took a little tapping there at the end. We're going to go back to the other end of the gun now, to the butt plate, and it's already been on this kit attached. What we want to do with this is sand away this excess, or file away this excess wood. So they've got it on here and screwed on, we don't want to mess with that if we don't have to. So this is just be kind of wood reduction to get it to line up to, to the butt plate there. Ooh, you got a bunch. Yeah, there's a bunch on that one side. Yeah. What I'd do is I'd mark a line good, pull my butt plate off. Okay. Try to get close to that line as I can. Since the butt plate's not finished, polished or anything, then once I got my wood really close, then I would just file my butt plate and my wood together. Okay. So that way you're seamless. Both. Yeah. Okay. At the same time. And you can just leave it on there right now and go after this side. You just kind of want to rotate, rotate your gun. It. Then I would go out here and grab my gun probably right in this area. Okay. So I can put it up on its side, then I can go after that. Okay. And that's how I would do that. I see leaving the butt plate on there as a way to keep that contour. Yeah. And from the stock I mean, all the I way the back. I the same thing. I'll put my metal on a gun and then I'll work my wood to my metal. Okay. And that's not uncommon at all. Especially trigger guards. You didn't let trigger guards. Trigger guard in, put a junk screw in. Mm. File it in, get everything where you want it, clean everything up, and then you put your real screws in. With Much like the butt plate, we have a lot of excess wood here out on the nose cap. So we're gonna do the same technique that we used on the butt plate, leaving the brass on and hitting this with a file to see if we can get this to look a little bit more flush with the hardware. Now I don't wanna get into that barrel very much because it has a fine, draw file desk finish on it. So I'm being real careful out here on this end, of the, I guess the top end of it, trying to keep out of that barrel. I don't wanna to go too much farther this way before I rotate the gun over. I'm just doing the same thing, 
long strokes on our file. Checking every few strokes. Just to make sure that we've getting we're getting things lined up. I'm checking for any facets or grooves that I'm leaving, possibly with that file, and just going through with the file in a different direction to make sure that I'm kind of evening those out. I don't mind if there's a little bit of texture to it. I like a gun to have, you know, not after a thousand grit sandpaper finish on this. I want to be able to hold it, be able to get a good grip on it, and feel the wood. I don't want any splinters or anything, but I want a nice texture to it. So we're getting there on this top side. This top side's, or if you imagine the different faces here, we have kind of a top face, this right face that starts to go down, and the left face that heads up here towards the barrel. The center here is lining up pretty well. So I want to be careful and just focus on the left and the right areas here. Try to get them close. Staying out of that center. And you can kind of listen for it. You can hear that file start to catch on that brass. And as long as you have a pretty steady level grip on that file, That'll mean that you're pretty close to lining up on that, on that nose cap. And at some point, this is going to kind of come down to personal preference on how close you want that to be. For me, that feels pretty close. Something to remember as we're doing this, that wood is going to swell a little bit when we finish and oil it. Right now, it's super dry. But adding that oil is going to cause that to swell up just a little bit. So it might look like the hardware is a little too small for the wood when it swells up a little bit. But we're kind of expecting that. I haven't been keeping track of the amount of time that we've spent on this. But right now I think we're probably about three or four hours of work. And everything is fitted. All of the hardware is attached. The butt plate is, here is flush. There's a couple things up here that I'm not too happy with. Um, this wood here, there's a lot of space here that I think we can, we can take down to make a little bit more flush off of our tang here. But as far as the instructions are concerned, we're ready to stain and finish. Now, I'm going to do a few more things as we proceed with the series here. There's a lot of machine marks here on this brass. Our nose cap needs some polish and our butt plate does as well. And if you look at our ramrod pipes here, they're just about the same as the patch box. They got a lot of machining marks. And this is just a real simple lathe cut here to give the impression of wedding bands around that. So moving forward now, we're gonna start hitting this hardware some with some files and some sandpaper and try to spruce it up a little bit.